everybody, and welcome to the final of the British Softball Federation National Slow Pitch, Co-ed Slow Pitch Championships here at Farnham Park, brought to you by BSUK.TV. We're going to uh, introduce the two teams now and give you the starting lineup for the Pioneers, who are going to be the home team in this game. Hitting, hitting leadoff, we have Jet Russell, followed by Amy Rice, Steve Hazard, Jenny Ball, Dan Spinks, Laura Brockman, Steve Rice, Chelsea Robinson, Dan Bello, Kim Ackhurst. And now we can look at the uh, starting lineup for H2O. We have Neil Sylvester, Kirsty Leach, Chris Yoxel, Annie Dubovic, Ethan Solomon, Kim Miller, Lee Cornwall, Cos Pan, Roger Grooms, and Amy Wells. These are the two teams that finished first and second in the uh, National Softball League competition this year, Pioneers first and H2O second. Uh, Pioneers finished first in the round robin stage of this tournament. H2O had to uh, fight back from fourth place to get to the final, but I think by general agreement, these are two of the top uh, maybe three teams in British softball, so it's uh, appropriate they should be here in the final. We're looking forward to a great game. Yeah, they've had several great battles this year already. They've played each other several times, and it'll be fantastic to see how this one rolls out. Both of them are rolling into this game pretty hot, so uh, I'm looking forward to this one. What do you think, Hel? Mate, I think this is going to be an absolute cracker. Um, we've got a lot of power. Um, we've got a lot of skill, um, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, big squad over there for H2O. Um, a little bit smaller over there on the um, Pioneer side. Um, but you know what, Liz? Let's just hope for a great game. Yeah, definitely. At home plate, you've got uh, Roger Grooms uh, representing H2O. You have Dan Spinks representing uh, Pioneers. And, of course, Dan and Roger are both uh, the number one and number two pitchers, however you want to rank them for the uh, GB Slow Pitch team. Now we have the umpires for the final. We're going to have Chris Moon behind home plate. The base umpires are going to be Daryl Pittman and Pete Saunders. And congratulations to these three umpires for being appointed to this game. It's a recognition or award for their great season, a great tournament they've had this weekend as well. So great job, you three. And geez, those blues are looking good out there, Liz. Let's hope they get a good call today. Now the two teams are uh, coming down towards home plate. They'll shake hands and then we'll uh, get the ball game started. This is the kind of... Uh, introduction to games you see in European tournaments and I think it's a, it's a great idea the British Softball Federation are doing this because these teams deserve to uh, get some recognition for getting to the final. And there's a lot of love out there on the time and look at all this, lots of hugs, lots of cuddles. Can't imagine that's going to last long when this thing gets underway. No, and I think that's a fantastic thing. These two teams are great friends off the field but once uh, play ball is called it will be game on, I'm sure. Game on indeed. So you've got uh, maybe the two best pitchers in British softball opposing each other in this game. You've got really powerful batting lineups. Uh, we could probably expect a lot of runs to be scored, though. What do you think? Yeah, I think this will be a high-scoring game. If the last game was to be uh, anything to go on, and both in the last game it was fantastic pitching, but teams just, just got behind it. We've got some really um, top-notch hitters here. With uh, H2O, of course, the, the problem for them is having been so close to this title a number of times and never managing to quite get over the hump. And uh, psychologically, are they, are they ready to do it? I think they are. I think they're the kind of players that will just come out and play and, and let the results take care of themselves. I know history is history, but I think once uh, you start playing, in my mind, that doesn't come into it a huge amount, but I'm, I'm sure some of these players have been around for a lot of years. They'll certainly be wanting to win this one. Yeah, a lot of experience in both of these sides. And uh, do you know what? I'm sure they're all going to be cool, calm, collected. Even if it is a high-scoring game, do you know what? Softball is all about hitting. So pitch softball anyway. So let's just hope for a good game. Let's see lots of runs, lots of hits, uh, and some lots of great plays, and let's see how this turns out. So Pioneers take the field. They're the home team in this game by virtue of uh, finishing... Uh, top in the pool play. Dan Spinks is uh, slowly making his way to the pitcher circle, kicking a bit of dust, getting things, uh, the footing the way he would like it. Chelsea Robeson will be his catcher, a uh, fine young fast pitch and slow pitch player. And leading off for uh, H2O is going to be Neil Sylvester. Yeah. 
there's quite a big crowd for this game. There's a crowd behind home plate and the bleachers that uh, BSUK have recently put on this field. There are people watching down the sidelines. And you know what, Bob? It's great to have some bleachers here. It's um, I wasn't here for Windsor, so this is the first time I've seen the bleachers. We're getting some waves over there from uh, some of the strays in the back of the crowd. Um, but yeah, it's great to have some seating here for everybody to watch. And of course, next year, we're, we're going to have a clubhouse open uh, here at Farnham Park. We're going to have uh, another baseball-softball combination field in operation. So we're going to have two baseball fields, four softball fields, a clubhouse, bleachers. It's, it's getting to be a really great facility. Yeah, I'm really excited about the future of this facility. I think it's great for British baseball and British softball. And the more and more it's played, on the, uh, I just think it's fantastic. Particularly on a day like today, day of cracking sunshine. What a place to be. We're ready to go. Dan Spinks is ready to pitch to Neil Sylvester. Tosses the first pitch and Neil takes it for a ball. It is game on, Liz. Let's hope for a good, good game, Kels. Play ball. Dan Spinks pitches again and again it's ball two outside. This is more to Neil's liking and he hits a ground ball. The Jenny ball can't handle the third base. Neil's digging for second, he's going to be in there safely. The crowd was anticipating maybe an out call. The tag got slapped on, but uh, in the Gee, opinion Liz, of Pete Saunders, he got that We might there. have to go to the video for that one, Liz. That was a close call, buddy. That was close. And I think that's a great example of how difficult third base can be there. Jenny Bull, fantastic fielder, but that ball just hammered at her. Very hard sometimes to make the up. Gee, hard ground ball, hard ground ball, Liz, and what a great player too. That was close. That was very close. So here we have Kirsty Leach, the base hitting machine. Let's see if she can uh, bring Neil around. Dan Spinks delivers ball two. Hasn't quite found the range yet. And, uh, nice to see the Blues under pressure nice and early, Liz. That's always great for the game. Well, you know, the pressure is on them, and it's a massive achievement for them to be here in this final as well. So congrats to you. Christy, it's a ground ball to second. Over to first just in time. Neil Sylvester moves to third, and there's one down. Maybe a few nerves showing early there, Kels. Geez, that was a nice recovery there, Liz. Um, got the ball to one nice and early. Um, well done there, Bellow. Yeah, and sometimes you'll see on a play like that, sometimes the, the throw then goes to the fence, but he steadied himself to make the out. So good job there, Dan. So we've got the power hitting Chris Yoxall at the plate with a runner on third, one down. So, uh, Chris, Chris looks at ball one, and Dan Spinks is, is throwing the ball high, not yet quite in the strike zone. There's a long drive to left field. Will it stay fair? It is a foul ball. Jeez, just foul there. Well out of the ground, but just foul. That's strike. That's a big in there from uh, Chris. And uh, Gino took a nasty knock in the last game. Liz had two balls hit straight at him. Um, let's just make sure uh, doesn't take another one in this game to the face. Chris is back in the still box. intact though, Liz. That was a, a great shot down the left field line. There's a line drive into left field for a base hit. That's going to bring in the first run of the ball game. Chris Yoxall takes the turn, goes back to first, and H2O have drawn first blood in the final. Great team batting there for Chris Yoxall just to smash that ball. Nice hard line drive to left field and stand up single to score the run there. Great job, Chris. Good adjustment after the long fly ball. That brings Andy Dubovich to the plate. And, and she looks at ball one. This girl's got some power, Liz. Oh, she really does. I think Annie is certainly one of the stronger hitters down here, and she's shown that all season long, um, and, and including today. And it's a line drive, but right as Steve has it, a shortstop, that's not the place to hit it. But there's two down. Unfortunately, straight at him. That was a really hard hit ball, two meters out the side, and that's a, a single, possibly a double. Jeez, I don't even think he even flinched there, Liz. No, that was, that was a nice play, has it? The Hasman. The batter is the shortstop, Ethan Solomon. Two down now. A run in and a runner on first base. Jeez, it's Ethan the Magnet Solomon, Liz. Everything was hit to his glove in the last game. Yeah, he's been busy today and he's had a good um, day with the bat as well so far. Ethan hit one out in the last game and he'll be uh, maybe looking to do the same here. Takes the pitch for a strike. The sun is beginning to come down in the sky. It's maybe in the batter's eyes if you look in the 
it looks slightly up and in the wrong direction. Batters will have to guard against that. Ethan swings a hard grab ball to third. Jenny Ball's got that one oh, yeah. over to first base. Jenny and the Ball inning is over. What an so absolute H2O gun get of an arm she's got there, Liz. One run. But uh, it wasn't the start, quite the start they made in the last game. And now Pioneers will come in and see what they can do. Jeez, hashtag this girl can, Liz. Wowzers. Certainly this girl can. Good, good call, Kels. Jenny Ball is probably one of the best softball players that Great Britain has ever produced. Uh, as a batter, as a fielder, uh, just as an all-around player. She's played fast pitch and slow pitch and probably should have had more of a fast pitch career than she did, but she has become maybe the, the premier, one of the two premier women players in British slow pitch. Yeah, she's certainly all class. And yeah, she grew up in the Midlands, was part of the BSUK Academy, part of a lot of the youth um, junior national team programs that we've had running. And I think she's a real credit to British softball. She's a fantastic player. Yeah, Amy, the uh, juggler Wells, back in there at catch. Uh, let's see if she can handle that bounce off the pitch in this game, Liz. Yeah, and she's got her sun in her eyes as well in this game. So uh, let's see how she goes there. She's We're ready to this. go, and uh, Jet Russell stepping in for Pioneers, and Roger Grooms is ready to throw. Jet wastes no time. It's a line drive into left center field on one hop taken by Annie Dubovich, and... Pioneers have a base runner to start the game, diving back into Jeez. first base. Nearly dug himself a hole there, Lizard One, sliding back into one. Interesting, the ball was at second. I'm not entirely sure why he slid, but I'll dove. But uh, anyway, just the start that they're after with a leadoff single, runner on one. Maybe some no questionable base coaching there from the old uh, Robbie Robinson there, Liz. Batter is Amy Rice. Rogers uh, bringing his left fielder in a little bit. And Amy takes a strike. Maybe it's a line drive hitter. Doesn't hit long fly balls. I think Roger wants to uh, cut off a base hit if he can. Amy swings the bouncer to short. Over to second for one. No throw to first. Amy beats that ball to first base, but uh, the lead base runners cut down, and there's uh, one down. And here is Steve Hazard, one of the most feared hitters in British softball. Roger throws him a high pitch, and Chris Moon calls it a strike. That one's inside. Steve Hazard takes it. And it's incredible how deep the outfield is standing here for Hazard. That's a ball, ball two. Roger doesn't want to give him a really hittable pitch. We'd like him to fish for something. Steve swings. It's one hopper down to third. Kim Miller's up with it over to second for the force play. And Steve Hazard didn't quite deliver what the Pioneers expected. There are two down now, a runner on first. And the batter will be Jenny Ball. Here's another, another young lady, Liz, who's got some fence power. Yeah, Jenny certainly hits the ball hard. Also hits for average, so she will look to find a gap here with two down. Jenny takes a strike. She's a former MVP and best batter in a European slow pitch championships but here she is a ground ball to short picked up and flipped a second in time bobbled for a minute but uh ethan solomon came up with it flipped a second the inning is over and there are no runs for pioneers so at the end of inning number one h2o has a very slender one to nothing lead well good start i think it's going to be a tight game here kelly yeah going to be an absolute belter mate um you know pioneers are a pretty solid team Let's just see if uh, they can find their bats in this next innings. Defensively, we know they're uh, pretty good. Yeah, they're certainly sound. And I think that's what anyone wants out of any final, isn't it? Just a good, tight game. You know, I don't want any blowouts here. And I think from what we've seen so far, it's going to be a good battle here. Uh, Kim Miller will be leading off for uh, H2O when the inning is ready to start. Dan Spinks is uh, just now making his way out to the circle. Dan doesn't move quickly except when he has to, and then he can move very quickly indeed. He's one of the top fielding pitchers in British softball. Very hard to get anything past him, but uh, his normal mode of locomotion is not, uh, not that swift. The umpires are taking their positions. Kim Miller is about to step into the batter's box. And here we go for inning number two. 
And Kim looks at a strike. So leading off here with a number six batter, um, certainly H2O are in a good position here to get another couple of runs on the board. Kim smacks it in the left field and it's going to drop for a base hit. So just what H2O would have wanted. Kim Miller on first and Lee Cornwall coming to bat. And Lee's had a great game uh, today. He's really, he's done well all weekend. And this morning we saw him have a, have a cracking game. Kim Miller yeah, reached up and took a high pitch and kind of tomahawked it in the left field. Dan Spinks ready to throw. And Lee Cornwall takes the ball. Great pitch there from Dan Spinks. Of course, Lee is a GB uh, slow pitch teammate of Dan's. Dan knows all about where he hits, what he wants. And that pitch is a strike. And again, Dan Spinks hitting those corners. Yeah, Dan's certainly a very experienced pitcher and won't give much away. He, he controls the ball well and hits those edges very well. There's a bouncer towards third. Jenny Ball's up with it. Quick throw to second for the force play. Nice play by Jenny Ball. They nice get the play, lead runner and there's one down. Rock solid there from Jenny Ball at three. Uh, great play to second base there. Batter now is Paz Paniotis. Swing, it's a ground ball to short. Hazard has it over to second for one, back to first. And the ball gets away, so they only get one. The two down now, still a runner on first. Jeez, and again, Piney is really close to turning almost two double plays there in this innings. Um, it's going to be a tight ball game, this one. Yeah, Pania certainly defend well, and they've got the confidence to go for that lead run every time and, and confidence to make that throw, particularly here with the fences. If the ball gets past first, it's unlikely to be an extra base. So uh, good heads-up play by them. Do you know what? It's going to be important to keep the forces on here in this game. Yeah, Batters. it certainly does make a difference. Batter is the pitcher, Roger Grooms. He swings and hits the ball down the right field line, but foul. Yeah. Foul ball. Batter's out. Ah, and caught. Great caught catch out there, there right Kim. Field. So the side is retired. Good job. No runs in the second inning for H2O, and we remain with a very tight ball game, one to nothing to H2O going into the bottom of the second inning. We're over here on the sidelines in the uh, Ginger Ninja, Steve Patterson getting his team G'd up to go out and have another fielding innings here. Yeah, he's an interesting position as uh, a player here on H2O, but also coach of the uh, GB slow pitch team. Steve's uh, speciality is uh, kind of player management, and uh, he's really good at uh, getting players G'd up, and uh, maybe that he could work that magic for H2O to win their first championship. Where, where we're situated here, uh, Liz and uh, Kelly and myself, it's hard to see down the right field line, so when Roger Grooms hit that ball down there, it was uh, kind of guesswork on our part what happened to it, but uh, we found out soon enough. And you know what, Patterson, he's um, he's an all-round nice guy. The only problem is, shame he's a Red Sox fan for all you Boston Red Sox fans out there. Strike. Back to the ball game, and Dan Spinks coming to the plate to face Roger Grooms. Takes a strike. Strike. And another one. So Dan in the hole, 0-2. Two. Two. Illegal. Roger Grooms throws an illegal pitch, too high. Hoping Dan Spinks might have a go at it. Dan knows better than that. Illegal. Roger does it again, his second straight illegal pitch. Classic pitcher versus pitcher battle, hey? Absolutely. Two and two the count. This one's a bit more hittable, and Dan Spinks lines it in the left field for a base hit. Calls back in quickly, Dan stays at first. Time! Base, Pioneers have the lead off batter on. Great job there from uh, Dan Spinks, and it's worthwhile giving out a mention to his wife, Kelly Spinks. Congratulations on the birthday of your little baby. Yes, and Kelly otherwise would have been playing this game. However, she's uh, she's on the sidelines, but she, I'm sure she'll be back strong. And you know season. what? That little baby's just gorgeous, but it looks like he's got his dad's hair. Here's Laura Brockman. One hopper to short. Over to second for one. Back to first, and again, the th they don't complete the double play. The throw gets past Kirsty Leach, but no advance for Time. Laura Brockman. 
And that's three double plays that could have been turned, two by Pioneers and now one by H2O. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So early on into the game, but we've already had so many opportunities. I think um, that's a real difference between fast pitch and slow pitch, and also baseball and slow pitch as well. The bases here are 65 feet away, and of course you can't lead off the base until the ball's hit. So uh, automatically gives you more chance of turning that double. Here's the left hand hitting Steve Rice. He swings and drives the ball to right center field. That's going to be a Cut. catch. Throw comes in, no advance from Laura Brockman, and there are two down. Time! Fly balls like that are meat and drink to slow pitch outfielders. There are four of them spread across the outfield, so hit the ball in the air and someone's liable to catch it. Yeah, he did a great job of getting back on that. And here we go, Chelsea Robinson up to bat here. And you know what, Liz, I'm surprised she's not out there about with that gold medal hanging around her neck that she's just picked up at the uh, Junior Europeans. Yes, last weekend, she was part of the successful team at the Junior Europeans at the under-19 level. Uh, fantastic to see. Unfortunately, they're hit into a fielder's choice to end the inning. That uh, no jewellery rule might have got her out there, Liz, with that gold medal. So another scoreless inning, and uh, we're going to the top of the third. Score remains H201 and Pioneers nothing. Chelsea's certainly the youngest player playing in this game here and a real example of hard work paying off. She's come up through the junior system in slow pitch and in fast pitch and has really worked hard. Her father is one of the coaches, but she's really worked hard on her own merit to make it to where she's got today and certainly the youngest player here uh, playing today. Yeah, and do you know what? The future's bright for these youngsters with uh, the announcement that uh, baseball and fast pitch softball is back in the Olympics in 2020. She's a sort of play for for these Great Britain teams. Oh, absolutely. The, the timing couldn't be better for kids of that age. Not back in my Daddy, day, Liz. Okay. And of course, it was a bit of a family affair in uh, in Spain where the uh, juniors won the European Championships because Chelsea's mom, Dawn, was the, the team manager and did a tremendous job looking after the players. But back to this one, top of the third inning. And Amy Wells leading off for H2O. Dan Spinks ready to throw. And oh. the pitch is short for ball one. Amy lets that one go, and it's high and wide for ball two. Amy played second base for the GB women's team in the World Championships in July in uh, Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Did a fine job. The team did a great job. Came, finished 13th in the world, but actually played better than that. Could have got a win against Japan, who were the, uh, the world champions at the time. Three balls to Amy Wells. Ball. And that one is deep, and it's ball four. Dan Spinks has done the one thing that a slow pitch pitcher never wants to do, and that's put someone on base for the walk. Yeah, she's done a great job there to pick herself a walk, and that's a really high percentage play from a, you know from the coach's perspective. So good job there, Amy, getting on. Absolutely no risk of taking a walk there. We're back to the top of the lineup with Neil Sylvester, and he looks at cool. ball one. Strike. That one is in there and it's one and one. Got a lot of speed at first base with Amy Wells. Strike. Dan Spinks gets the call on the high outside strike. But Neil Sylvester, one and two. That one is a fly ball towards center field. That's dropped. The ball is dropped out there. Now thrown in, but Amy Wells quickly makes it to second Time. base. And that error gives H2O runners up first and second, and nobody out. Gee, nine times out of ten, he would have caught that. And Amy Wells did a great job to get us off to second. So obviously she was hanging around in between bases, expecting that to be caught. Great to go back and tag when the ball then hit the dirt, she or the grass. She then did a great job to get herself up to second safely. Gee, he's unlucky there for Ricey as well. I mean, you'd back him all day long. So here's Kirsty Leach. She takes high for a ball. Kirsty Swing hits a line drive into right field for a base hit. Amy Wells turning third, but she's not going to do it. She's not going to risk it. Throw comes back in quickly. But H2O have the bases loaded and nobody out. Chris Joxel up to bat. I mean, you've, um, we've seen him do it before. Let's, uh, let's see if the Ginger Ninja gives him the green light to launch this one. Big opportunity here, big opportunity. Chris Yoxall kind of looks at his feet, gets his feet ready in that kind of power position that 
It's got some great coloured shoes there as well. Bright yellow there, Liz. You're not going to miss it. called illegal by uh, Chris Moon. Too low. Yeah, I'm not sure what they match with. Uh, perhaps his club team, actually. They match his club team colours. Uh, does that uh, match his... Uh, is that in line with the uniform rules for Nationals, Liz? Just checking. Shoes are fine. Nationals, Shoes are fine. Nationals here we do all have to wear the same coloured trousers, which is unusual for British Chris soccer. Chris Yoxall hits it high in the air. It's not deep enough. And it's going to be caught just by the left field fans. Amy Wells tags up. She comes in to score. The runner on second. Ah. Sylvester tags up and goes to third. It's another run for H2O. Chris Yoxall hey, didn't. Go? Hit the ball the way he wanted to, but it still brings in a run. Yeah. Effective nonetheless. So a sack fly into deep uh, foul territory in the left field. Uh, the field got to the fence, leaning over the fence to make the catch yeah. and then get it in. Great job out there. Great, uh, great. great grab there from uh, Jet right on the fence there. And uh, Chris Yox are doing his job scoring the run. Here's Andy Dubovich. Takes ball one. High drive in the left field. Jet Russell is under this one. He's got it. It's going to bring in another run. The throw comes into second base. Prevent the runner moving up into scoring position. But two runs in, and it's a 3 nothing lead for H2O. And great heads-up play there by Pioneers, knowing they're unlikely to throw the out at home plate there on the on the tag up. So they've just gone straight, or tried to go straight to second. So good heads-up play. Try and keep the force on there and give up the run going home, which they're unlikely to be able to defend anyway. The Magnets back. Ethan Solomon up to bat. Takes ball one. It's it's great to see that kind of awareness. You don't all, always get it in slow pitch softball, but the teams at this level know know what to do. Yeah, the best the best are playing here this weekend. It's fantastic to see. Work hard, Dan. Work hard. Here we go. Strike. That's a strike, and the count is one and one. Had the throw gone home, the runner would have moved to second. Then a base hit scores it. So keeping that runner on first may save Pioneers from giving, giving up another run in this inning. Three balls, Dan one strike. pitching very carefully here. Ethan could put the ball out of the ballpark. But he lines the ball to left field. That's down on one hop. It goes to the fence. Kirstie leads around to third base. Ethan pulls into second. It's a double, but it's, it's not yet at least a further run. Yeah, fantastic shot from here. Nice and flat. Very hard to defend that. In fact, uh, impossible to defend that for a yeah. nice stand-up uh, stand double there. The batter is Kim Miller. Still only one out. Break. Great pitch there from Dan Spinks. Sorry, two outs. Keep working hard, two outs in the eight. Pitch from Dan Sphinx to Kim Miller. She tomahawks it again. That's down for a base hit into center field. Two more runs are coming home. The throw gets away. Kim thinks about going to second base. Doesn't do it, but she's driven in two throws for H H2O. And the lead is now 5 nothing. Great timely hitting there. Yeah, great job there from Kim. Um, H2O have now got the, their bats going. That's twice she's taken a high pitch and just tomahawked it on a line in the outfield. Yeah, unorthodox swing, but being effective both times this game. So here's Lee Cornwall, runner on first, two down, four runs in in the inning. Three, four runs, yep. Strike. Lee takes a strike. Yeah. Dan Spinks getting those corners. He's a very effective pitcher. Yes, he is, Liz. Line drive right to Jenny Ball. She takes it at face height, and the inning is over. But Jeez, four big runs for H2O. And the score after two and a half innings is H2O five and Pioneers one. And it's a great job, Liz, that Jenny Ball got her no, glove to zero, that one, otherwise sorry, she would have taken that ball right to the, the face. Please. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a stinger in her hand as, uh, as the glove came off. Okay. She had a bit of a shake of her hand there. Sometimes if you just get it on the wrong part of the glove, it can really uh, sting your palm a little bit. You know what? She's a tough competitor. She'll be, she'll be absolutely fine. That's got to hurt, but uh, we've all been there, Liz. Some of us have been there and uh, have had the ball pop out there, Liz. Uh, remember triple play from Edinburgh? Danny Gunn must still be ruined the day. Uh, it wasn't a triple play. Uh, that's because you dropped the ball, Liz. We're going to the bottom of the third inning and we're down towards the bottom of the Pioneers. Batting order, we'll have Dan Bellow, Kim Akers, and then back to the top of the lineup with Jeff Russell. Roger Good is just uh, completing his warm-up pitches. 
It's that famous one, Liz. Uh, when is a triple play not a triple play? When uh, you drop the ball. So here comes Dan Bellow, the uh, second base player for Pioneers. Well, let's see if Pioneers can get something started here. Quick. Yeah, it's turning our attention back to this game, Kelly. Back to this game. Dan Bellow's up to bat. Yeah, and let's uh, not forget to mention we've got... Um, Michael, the Pie Man Lee over there, base coaching three. Uh, you've got to keep a close eye on him. Uh, pretty forgetful sometimes with his substitutions. Let's just keep a close eye on that one. Meanwhile, uh, it's a bouncer back to Roger Grooms. He handles it easily, he throws to first, so there's one down. Not the start Pioneers would have wanted in this inning. No, they really need to get a couple of runs on the board here just to keep themselves within, you know, uh, striking distance. So uh, let's look to Kim here to start us off here. Strike! Kim Akers takes a strike. And the ball outside. Kim's a real utility player. She can play anywhere. She's played infield, outfield. She used to catch in fast pitch. Swings, hits a hard grab on third base. Kim Miller has it, throws to first. And there are two quick outs in the bottom of the third inning. Pioneers will be back to the top of the order now with Jet Russell. Being 5 0 down is not quite the hole that uh, Blue Steel got themselves in in the last game, but it's still Pioneers are going to want to get something on the board pretty quickly. Yeah, they'll be wanting to chip away at this lead quite, quite quickly, Strike. just so they don't leave themselves too much to do too late in the game. Roger Goose throws, and ball. that's a ball. Another American we got here, Liz. I mean, he is a great batter, and uh, let's see if Jack can get them started. One hopper to short. Ethan Solomon up with it, over to first base, and that was a very quick inning, and a very unproductive inning for Pioneers. And at the end of three, the score remains H205, and Pioneers nothing. We're seeing a lot of uh, good infield defense in this game. They, they may not have completed the double plays, but they're certainly hoovering up the ground balls. Yeah, nothing, not too much has got through, and a lot of throws on target. It's fantastic to see top quality defense at this level. And you know what? The double play is not being turned. I don't think it's a massive issue, the fact they're having a go, and some of the runners would uh, are just beating him out, and, you know, and so be it. But really, uh, lots of heads up fielding so far in this Stop. game. And you know what? It's still a really, really tight okay. ball game. Pioneers are very, very much still in this. Um, there's a long way to go, um, and let's just see how this plays out. But they really got to start getting something going soon. Yeah, I mean, five runs in slow pitch softball isn't a big margin, not a big margin at all, but they'll, um, they'll be looking to tighten it up shortly. And it looks like we're having our first okay, substitution of the game. Numbers. Uh, Dan Spinks has come over to the booth with uh, home plate on for Chris Moon. Six, four. And we're waiting to hear what uh, Pioneers are going to do. So Jet Russell is out, and Fleeta Chu Siegel has come in. Uh, he will probably play the same position in the field. Uh, Chris Moon just coming over to make sure uh, everything is above board there with those substitutions. Good job, Chris Moon, who has just, uh, Liz, has recently retired from ESF Softball. Yeah, so Chris has had a, re a great career umpiring at European Softball uh, Championships and Cups. However, okay. just recently, at the um, most recent Cup, he, he uh, pulled up stumps, and that was his last. Pulled ESF up stumps, Liz. That's a great Australian reference you got in there. Well done. Yeah, a bit of a cricket one. Yeah, good job, good job. And I think there was a bit of a ceremony for him on the field in, in, uh, in Austria. That's a pop fly. That's easy for Jenny Ball in foul territory. And that's the first out for H2O. Yeah, I wasn't at the European Cup, but uh, I did see some photos and video. It looked like Chris Moon had a, like a guard of honor to walk out through and left his cat out on second base. So a great show of respect for someone who's given so much to the game over so many years. And interestingly, Liz, you see that guard of honor at typical, a lot of softball weddings we have these days. And there are a lot of softball weddings. There are a lot of softball weddings. Great place to meet people, Liz. We should get our own Tinder app for softball. It'd be great. This is uh, Dan Spinks facing his counterpart, Roger Grooms. Roger swings, fly ball into right center. That's going to be easy. Cut. And that's out number two. <laughs> and that brings Amy Wells to the plate. <laughs> Amy walked her first time up and came around to score. It takes ball one this time from Dan Spinks. Oh, the juggler. Let's see what she's got, Liz. 
ball. I'm and that's inside. A hard hit ball up the left field line. It's a good call, Liz. It's inside for ball two. Amy's got a great eye at the plate. It's Good. fast pitch. She draws a lot of walks. Here you go, Dan. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Strike. That's a great pitch. That's a strike. Now the counter is two even. Balls, two balls, two strikes. Amy has recently hey, graduated ball, from Loughborough University and has been instrumental in setting up their softball program there. Oh, and right. there's a oh, sharp the base hit in the left center field. That's a nice hit by Amy Wells. That's hard hit. Drive. It base and it puts speed on base again for H2O. Up the middle, casual. That was a great shot there. That was a great shot. I predicted left, she went center, but uh, either way, we'll take it. So back to the top of the lineup, Neil Sylvester. One out and runner on first. Strike! And a strike. Strike! And another. Neil Sylvester quickly in a hole 0 and 2. Dan Sphinx is uh, thinking about what he might do here to get him out. It's a high pitch. Oh. Neil lays off it and takes it for ball one. Over his shoulder. Geez, a little bit of noise over here, Liz, from the H2O bench, uh, wanting to, the umpires to be a little Dan bit louder. That's not like H2O to, far right to hand get side back into the, the blues, rubber. Just and a bit Neil of hits a sharp I think, to make ground the ball into the left field for a base hit. Amy Wells stops at second base. A bit of friendly banter there. From, see who uh, gets the ball back in. H2O has something going again. Runners up first and second, one out. And if they extend this lead much further, Pioneers are going to begin to have a little bit of a mountain to climb. A little bit of banter there from uh, the uh, H2O bench with the Blues. We all love a bit of banter, don't we, Liz? Well, it is a very uh, friendly environment here. It's certainly very competitive, but also super friendly. Or as we would call it down under, sledging, oh, yeah. Liz. Strike! Sledging. We like a good sledge. Kirsty Leach at bat takes strike one. But the umpires are always right, Liz. Oh. That they are. Kirsty had a thought about swinging at that. Thought better of it. Took ball one. Oh yeah. Ball. And ball two. Chris Moon thought about that a little bit. Didn't give it. Counters two and one. And that's a ground ball back to the middle, snared by. Steve Hazard flipped to second base, but they don't get the out. It's a great play by Steve. She's fantastic. The beat the ball to second Steve. base, and now the bases are loaded. Two down. And a very powerful Chris Yoxall coming to the play. Very tight play there at second. Great job by Hazard to make that diving stop and trying to flick it over to second, but uh, obviously just not quite in time. And loaded bases again for the second time, Liz, for Chris Yoxall. Big opportunity for Yoxall in his yellow shoes. Big opportunity. Oh, yeah. And the pitch is a strike. Dan Spinks doesn't want to get him, give him anything he can drive out of the ballpark. Chris took that one. Ball. That's a low pitch, ball one. Keep the pitch low, it's a little harder to drive, but Chris didn't bite on that one. Illegal. That one's even lower, it's an illegal pitch, and the count goes to two and one, and of course a, a walk to Chris means two runs for H2O. Just Dan not giving him a lot here. Oh, yeah. Ball. And that's ball three, so it's three and one now, and Dan Sphinx hey, Dan, big pitch has a here. big problem. Chris swings and hits a harmless little foul ball out of play Dead. to the left-hand side. It's not the swing he wanted to take. That's a fantastic pitch there from Dan Sphinx to keep him in that. Yep, he's fought back hard now here, full count, bases loaded, big opportunity, big opportunity here. Ate him up and popped out foul, Liz. Let's see what he can do. Here comes the payoff pitch. Chris yeah. Wayne's a line drive, base hit in the left field. That's going to score two runs. Kirsty Leach stops the second base. Good, really good team hitting from Chris Yoxall and two more runs for H2O. That's a great at bat, very disciplined there. He hung off the bad pitches early in the count, fought back, got, went to full count, and then came up with a smashing line drive to left field. Great shot, Yoxall. Good job, Gobby. And here comes Annie Dubovic to the plate. There may be more runs here for H2O. Annie's due for a base hit. 
It's a line drive right to Steve Hazard. Again, that's not where you want to hit it. The inning is over, but again, it's a productive inning for H2O. Yeah, and you know, sometimes soft ball's cruel. She's hit that ball so hard, unfortunately, straight to the shortstop. However, if she keeps hitting the ball hard like that, she'll, she'll succeed. And by this time, H2O have uh, tacked on another two runs. They've built the lead up to 7 nothing. We're going into the bottom of the fourth inning. And uh, Pioneers really need to do something. Yeah, it would seem like now's the time, hey? Now's the time. We have Amy Rice leading off. So we're at the number two hitter in the lineup. So this is a really good opportunity. They're right up the top of the lineup. So good opportunity here for Pioneers to get themselves back in this game. I think psychologically when you're you're down by you know seven eight runs and you get into the latter half of the ball game it begins to you get this feeling time is running out so pioneers here in the bottom of the fourth inning it's a pivotal inning for them yeah and i feel like if they could peg back two or three runs here they'd put themselves into a good psychological position feeling like they're really well and truly back in this game a few runs on the board here and uh, it's all go for pioneers and uh, puts a little bit more pressure on h2o so let's see if they can turn it on here in the bottom of the fourth amy rice swings and hits a high fly ball into short left field the shortstop Nathan solomon goes back he takes it. it's a nice catch in front of the left fielder and there's one down. He really ranged back a long way to get that, and fantastic to see he made a nice, loud call because the left field was certainly charging in hard to get that as well, and sometimes you can see some unfortunate collisions on that, but yeah. a nice, nice strong call made sure that it was clear that he it was his catch. Absolutely, Liz, and we've seen some absolute shockers uh, where there's been no calling, and uh, it's not good to see. No, some really unfortunate injuries uh, can happen that way. It's, yeah, not a great part of softball. Here's Steve Hazard. He hits a hard shot past Kim Miller at third base down the left field line. Steve's digging for two. That's going to be a double. He's in there standing up. And Five. Pioneers have a runner on second with one down. Great hit there from Steve. Uh, right up the third baseline on the ground. That's a great hit for a leadoff. Resisted to the temptation to go for the home run. And yeah, and that's, uh, that's why Hasman is uh, the great player that he is for GB. So Team here's player. Jenny Ball. And... Ball. She takes the ball, counters 1-0. and oh. Strike! Chris Moon thinks about that one at a little bit low, but he calls it. Counters even at 1-1. One and one. Jenny Springs hits a fly ball to left field. That's going to be taken. Steve has his bluffs to go to third. It's going nowhere. Time! Back in quickly. And yeah, there are two down. Two, yes, the Pioneers sir. looking another uh, donut in the face here. But the batter is Dan Spinks, and he has enormous power. He can put the ball over the left field fence and really yeah, quickly. He can hit for power. He can also uh, hit, for, hit for average or a base hit as well. So I'd like to see him hit for a line drive here. And that's a line drive into left field. It gets past the left fielder, goes to the fence. So Pioneers will get on the board. Steve Hazard comes in to score. Dan Spinks pulls up at second base. Pioneers are on the board. Right. You know what the crowd have bloody loved that, Liz? There goes the donut. They're on there the board. There goes the donut. No donuts today for Pioneers. They are on the board. Let's see if they can continue this rolling. So can they build on this? Here's Laura Brockman. Or as we would say back home, Liz, nobody's getting pantsed. Ball. Laura takes ball one outside. Dan Spinks clapping his hands at second base. He wants a base hit to bring Strike. him home. That's a strike, and the count is one and one. Laura swings, it's a ground ball. Nice backhand play by Chrissy Oxall. Gets the out at first base. The inning is over. Pioneers score only the one run. That was a fine backhand play at second base. And the score at the end of four full innings is H207 and Pioneers one, but at least they have won. Yeah, it's a nice one to be on the board. What a great play, though. Really sharp play there to, to finish that inning there, Cal. Yeah, that was a great effort uh, and uh, potentially stopped the Pioneers from getting something going there. Yeah, nice to, nice to keep them just to that one run. A backhand up the middle is never easy for a second baseman to make the play, uh, to, to receive the ball, then make the turn around and make the play. So great job there, Chris Yuxel. And he's got the very reliable Kirsty Leach at first base to, to bail him out if the throw's not quite there. Yeah, and she made a nice little pick up there, so great, great job. 
And you know, Liz, I don't know if I've mentioned it in this broadcast so far, but the coverage is outstanding. So well done to everybody involved. The coverage is great, and all the feedback I'm seeing on Facebook and Twitter and uh, all social media is all pointing to the fact that uh, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I think it. I think it's fantastic to see uh, some British softball broadcast, and hopefully this is one of many broadcasts that we get to do. And we'll be covering in the future some baseball and some some fast pitch as well. But um, hats off to the crew for getting such great images today. So here we go, top of the fifth inning. Ethan Solomon leading strike. off, and he takes a strike from Dan Spinks. Ethan swings again. It's a long drive to left center field. That's back, 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 and it's gone. That was so H two O get that run straight back. Hello Players boys. are coming out of the dugout to welcome Have H two O just close the door, Liz. It didn't take very long to uh, cancel out that run. No, with one swing, back, back they are, back to a seven run lead. Get down, get down. Let's go, let's go. Here's Kim Miller. She swings that tomahawk Dad. swing again at a high pitch, but this time fouls it out of play on the left side. Count is one strike. Dan Spinks won't be Good happy ball. with himself serving up that uh, home run ball to Ethan Solomon. Kim Miller swings again, completely misses that. The count goes to 0 2. That's the first one we've seen in this game. That's a big old swing and a miss there, Liz. That was Good indeed. So she will refocus herself and come back and. Uh, Focus on the ball here for this swing. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Kim takes it, and it drops low and outside for ball one. And good pitching there from Spinks just to uh, tease around the edge. Spinks at this one, pops it straight up. Dan Spinks backpedaling, but the second base player calls, makes the catch. And there's one down. We'll have to do it here. We have a new batter coming in here. We have Dan Spinks coming in to replace Lee Cornwall. Uh, sorry, correction. Dan Armstrong to replace uh, Lee Cornwall. That would be one heck of a change. Sorry. Oh, geez. Liz has just done what I've done earlier. Sorry, folks. Dan. Uh, it's Dan Armstrong Dan's coming, coming in. in. Dan Patterson, uh, the Ginger yeah. Ninja's son. Uh, another shout out for you then, Dan. Good job, buddy. Dan Armstrong, I'm sorry. Okay. Dan is rocking a lovely shade of tartan pants there. And did I mention earlier, Liz, he is a big fan of the Greyhounds. Don't think anyone knows quite yep. what to say about that. Um, it's okay. Don't you worry about that, Bob. He's a nice guy, Dan. Kiwi, unfortunately. Not Australian, but that's okay. All-round nice guy. Um, for the last five years, he's been uh, director of the Greater London Softball League. He stepped down from his role this year, but uh, has really given a lot back to softball in his time here. And he came in the last game as a pitch hitter and hey, got a base hit, so we'll down, see if he can do down, that again. And you know what, Liz? He's an ideas man, so let's see what he's got going now. Go, let's see what he can bring to the table. Pitch from Dan Spence. Strike! He's in there for a strike one. Dan swings at that one. It's a long drive to left field. It's going to be foul. Jeez. Foul. That was Over nearly a dick pound hole. in the pound shop there, Liz, uh, but went foul. He certainly does have fence power. Great swing, Dan. He's still dreaming, mate. Got another one. But now he's got two strikes. Nice pitch, Dan. Nice pitch. Dan Spinks won't want to give him anything to drive. He'll give him something that uh, maybe he'll nibble at. Dan, warn us, uh, Dan Armstrong will want to stay away from the foul lines here and try and get something uh, back up the middle. And there's a drive into center field, and that is going to be down, and it's going to go to the fence. Dan Armstrong has done it again. It's a ground rule double. The ball hops the fence. Dan Armstrong is sitting on second base. Another one? Jeez, another substitution here from uh, H2O. They are ringing the changes. Oh, we have Lee Cornwall coming back into the game to run for Dan, for Dan Armstrong. Dan Armstrong. Dan Armstrong's coming back out of the game again. Turns out he can hit, but he can't run, Liz. Yeah, he's done his job. He certainly has. As a pinch hitter to come in and hit a stand-up double, you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, of course, Lee Cornwall, Chris Moon, much uh, runner, Lee Cornwall so. has come back in uh, for Dan Armstrong. I believe Dan Armstrong might be coming back from injury as well. So playing it safe and bringing in the faster Lee Cornwall back into the game. Six, six, six. 
sure. So in British, in softball, uh, if a ball bounces, bounces once and then goes over the fence, we call that a ground rule double. So that means that it's a it's a two base hit. So if it bounces and then goes over the fence, that's a two base hit. Whereas if it goes over the fence on the fly, that that is a home run. So that uh, we call that a ground rule double if someone bounces the ball over the fence. Of course, if the ball bounces over the fence, fielders can't yeah. retrieve it, can't do anything about it. So you have to uh, absolutely uh, spot on there, Bob. Limit the runners. Uh, ability to charge around the bases. We've got a slight delay here while uh, the uh, Pioneers are going to make a pitching change. And uh, Steve Rice is coming in to pitch, replacing Dan Spinks. Steve will get a few warm-up pitches. Why, why do you think uh, Pioneers have done that? I guess just to change uh, change something up. I thought Dan was doing a pretty good job pitching, but I guess it, um, also Ricey is a, a lefty, so the ball's coming Three. in from a slightly different angle. Um, but yeah, I guess sometimes it just, as a coach, as a manager, just try and ch change things up, change the momentum of the game, and changing a pitcher is a great way to do that. This first pitch to Paz Paniotis is knocked into center field for a base hit. Lee Cornwall stops at third base as the ball's gotten Time. quickly. But uh, Steve Rice's first pitch was uh, not perhaps what he would have wanted. No, that would certainly hit hard. Geez, and if it wasn't a seven innings game, you could accuse them of time wasting, Liz. But that's not what's happening here today. We've got a long game to go. Just getting everybody in the game. So we've got more changes. Uh, Steve Patterson is consulting with plate on Park Chris Wood. Brian Connolly in. Brian BC in. Okay, so number eight coming and, uh, in. And it looks like Brian Connolly is going to come up and have a have an at bat. Yeah, we're Brian good. again is a tremendous hitter, power hitter, line drive hitter. The gate two zero trying to kill the game off here. Sorry. So Brian at the plate, one out. And runners on first and third. Uh, I'll check this now for you. What? At the very least, I think H2O want to sacrifice fly here to, to bring home the runner from third. Steve Rice pitches, and Brian takes a strike. It's a big opportunity here with Brian at the plate to increase our score for their score. Right. Each Brian, they'd be really looking to bust this game. Open. Double, two strikes. But he's in a hole 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. And he's out, called out on a call third strike. Brian didn't like it. Chris Moon rang him up, and there's two down. Jeez, well, how many of those do you reckon Steve Rice had in his pitching career, Liz? And that's the advantage of a left-handed pitcher. He can really curl the ball in differently to, to perhaps what a right-hander does. So um, obviously from our angle, hard to see the movement, but I suspect that that came in across the plate. That is a huge strike out there, Liz, huge. Here's Amy Wells. And she takes two balls. First pitch was illegal, too high. That one was outside. Steve Rice wasn't happy with the call. Amy swings, it's a high fly ball in the left center field. Left fielder comes in. That one is easy. The side is retired. But another run is across the plate for H2O. And they lead 8-1 to one at the end of four and a half innings. Do you know what a pioneer's got out of jail there, Liz? Yeah, they did. And a really effective pitching change. Uh, seemed, to, seemed to change some momentum and do the job for them. We'll have a good strike out, Liz. While we're waiting for the teams to... Uh, change places and go to the bottom of the uh, of the inning. We've had um, results from the other national championships, or at least, uh, yeah, from the other national championships. And uh, in the uh, Platinum Nationals, the National Softball League 2 category, a very close final. The Nottingham Sheriffs beat Ninos Privados 14 to 13. So Nottingham Sheriffs are the Platinum Champions for 2016. In the Gold category, um, Dodgers, another close final, 13-12 over Mouse Rat. Mouse Rat may have been undefeated up to that point. In the uh, silver category, again a close final, uh, Angels 20, United Nations 17. And finally, in the uh, bronze category, the only final that wasn't that close, saw the Vikings beat the Rattlesnakes by 20-5. to We'll give you those uh, results again at the end of our broadcast, but... Uh, this is the only final that's uh, still being played. The other uh, prizes, are, not prizes, but the other finals have all, all been decided, and prizes will be awarded after this game. 
right off the top of the catering van, Liz, there. Uh, that was a great shot there. Yeah, that was a long foul fly ball that managed to foul, find our caterers. Uh, unfortunate for them. And you know, it's not the first car that got smashed in this weekend, Liz, earlier today uh, in the uh, Dodger Sheriff's game. One of the sheriffs hit a walk off right through the back of Johnny Hart's windscreen. Yeah, unfortunately, their walk off home run did damage uh, one of the key players' cars, uh, adding insult to injury. Steve Rice, it's about to. Roger Grimms turns and throws one hop. Kirsty Leach can't go in for space. He might not have got Steve Rice anyway. The ball was a difficult play. He's a speedy runner there, Bob. He's pretty quick. Yeah, and also being a lefty, he has that couple of step advantage already. I think he might have beaten that. Good call. Good call there, Blue. Good call. So Pioneers get the lead runner on. That's what they want. Bottom of the fifth inning. And the batter is Chelsea Robeson. Strike. She takes a strike on the outside corner. The count goes to one and one. Chelsea Swing hits the ball in the hole. Base hit in the left field. Steve Rice moves up to second base. Chelsea's done a good job the bottom of the order, and Pioneers has something going. Yeah, really timely hitting there from Chelsea. Good on her. Big opportunity here with Dan Bellows up to bat, followed by Kim, and then back up to the top of their lineup. Great job, and uh, the crowd are just loving this, Liz. Uh, they're really excited to see if uh, Pioneers can get back in this game. And Dan Bellows swings and hits a base hit in left field. Pioneers are going to get another run. Steve Rice comes down to score. Chelsea stops the second base. Pioneers wanted a, a bunch of base hits in the air. Yeah, a, re a really effective hitting, and it just goes to show it's not all about the long ball, but hard hit um, line drives or ground balls can be really, really effective. Yeah, let's see if they can start to string some hits together. Batter will be Kim Akers. Runners on first and second. No one out, a run in. Score is 8-2. to two. Strike! And Kim takes the first pitch for a strike. Swing a ground ball back to Roger Grooms to second for one. On to first for a double play, and that's a rally killer for Pioneers. That's a real rally. Die. Great defense, H2O. That's uh, that's really knocked the winds out, wind out of their sails there. Big, big double play there, and a great effort there from Ethan Solomon at shortstop. So Chelsea Robeson moves to third base, but the big difference is there are now two out. The Pioneers are at the top of the order with uh, Lisa Siegel. At the very least, they're going to want to get this one more run in. And Fleet is a great batter. He really is a very experienced player. Grew up in the States, but has lived here for years. And there's a line drive, base hit, poked into right center field. That brings home Chelsea Robeson. And Pine Air is at least have the benefit of another run. Really nice. timely hit there from Fleeter. That's a fantastic shot, Liz. Good team play. Play it, went the average, uh, snuck it through the right side. Fantastic shot. So now we're uh, with A.B. Rice and um, can Pioneers keep something going? At the very least, they're back within five. That's going to get the number. A.B. swings is a bouncer to third. Kim Miller has it. And the throw gets away at first base and the inning is still going. Five. Play that should have been made wasn't made. Yeah. And you know what, Bob? Sometimes you just need a little bit of luck in this game, and it can turn it on its head. Yeah, or can't it just? And of course, that brings up none other than Steve Hazard, and uh, the three-run home run here would really uh, put the Pioneers back yeah. in the game. Could really blow open the game right here with one swing. Here. Yeah, exactly. Liz, big home run here. It's a two-run ball game, and it's all to play for. Roger Grooms will certainly be looking to be uh, pitching carefully here. Around cool. this I can't imagine he's going to give him anything, Liz. First pitch is outside. Steve swings. It's a long, long drive. Whoa, whoa, well, well, here we go. And that is and ball. Uh, and we have a ball game. Pioneers are back in this. And uh, hello, boys. Steve has just launched a bomb. Talk about situational hitting. He is just the batter you'd want up in that situation with runners on. Just, just the batter you'd want. And he's come up with the goods. Did his job what he needed to, Liz. Great effort. Pioneers are back in this. Three RBIs for Steve up. Hazard. The score is 8-5. to five and They're in for a ball game now. Here we go, here we go. 
And with Jenny Ball, Dan Spinks and Laura Brock coming up to bat in the batting order was sort of a very strong part of their right. lineup. so expect some more runs here. Mike Cruz throws Jenny a strike. Illegal. That's an illegal pitch, so the count goes to one and one. I think H2 thought they were maybe out of the inning with a double play, but uh, didn't quite work out that way. Jenny gets a ground ball to third. Kim Miller has this one again. This time the throw is good. The inning is over, but Pioneers are back in this game, and the score after five complete innings is H208 and Pioneers five. Six. Six. Puts so the Pioneers pressure. are only two runs behind. Puts the pressure back on uh, H2O now, Liz. Yeah, certainly what an inning there to get themselves right back in the game. Uh, we, we have a good ball game on our hands here. Oh, it's going to get out of the wire, Liz. That's bloody love it. It's great. Oh, and, and that's what you'd hope out of a national final, right? You want a nice, tight game to finish the season. These are the best of the best of the British softball teams, so it's fantastic to see it tight at the end. So the task for H2O now, I think, will be to try and tack some runs on and see if they can widen the lead, put the pressure back on the Pioneers. Yeah, I think both teams from here on in will be looking to win each inning, so just tack on a couple of runs each inning, keep keep uh, keep chipping away at the, either the lead or uh, chipping away at trying to get the lead back. I think we're in for an exciting finish. And Dan Spinks has uh, re-entered the game as a pitcher, so Steve Rice's time on the mound was, was brief, but... Uh, Fairly effective. Gee, Steve Rice is going to be happy with that. Pitched an innings, got a strikeout, played a blinder. And back to the outfield, mate. Back you go. Job done. I think that's really effective game management as well, and it shows the depth of the Pioneers team. They can mix things up and still be really effective. And not being scared right. to make those changes, Liz, um, in case things aren't going quite right for you. Just, um, game's turn now. Here's Neil Sylvester, swings. It's a fly ball into right center field. Steve Rice is there. And there's one away. Ricey, everywhere. He's been busy. He's a busy boy, isn't he? Good job he's quick on his feet, Liz. H2O are at the top of the lineup. They might have been looking for something a little bit better there, but uh, here's Kirsty Leach. Oh. Christy takes the ball, Chris Yoxall on deck, and of course Chris Yoxall will be thinking of doing the same thing Steve Hazard did. Yeah, big opportunity here, they're in a great part of the batting lineup. If Christy can get on, Yoxall will certainly be looking to go for the long ball. ball. Correction there, Liz, that's uh, Kirsty. Sorry, Kirsty. Kirsty Leach looking for a walk here, possibly. Strike. But that one, that's a strike. Two balls, two strikes. The count is two and two. Make it hard, make it hard. It's a fly ball into right field. And a really nice catch by second baseman going back to take that one. So two down, no one on. And here's Chris Yoxall. It was a fine play by Dan Bellow in, in short right field. Yeah, he showed his range, he showed his athleticism there. Here we go, here we go! Fairly flat strike. pitch to uh, Chris Yoxall, called a strike. Chris holds the bat all the way down on the end. Strike! And that's another strike, so... Dan Spinks gets ahead of him quickly, 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Looking for the strikeout, doesn't quite get it. And not a pitch he can drive, so Chris Yoxall leads forward, hits it on the ground, into left field for a base hit. Hey, sure, oh. they'll really be looking uh, to score a run here. They want to. They want to be uh, con uh, adding to this to this lead here. It's eight six is not a lot at this late stage in the game. Here's Andy Dubovich. Two way, two way. Pioneers outfield fairly deep for her. Oh yeah. Strike. She takes a strike. Yeah, I think the outfield is showing the respect that she's earned this season. She's hit the ball hard and deep all year. There, she can pound that ball, Liz, a long way. A dick pound, if you will. 
Just pitch is short. Dick Dick Pound count is goes to two and one. Dick Pound is the uh, former vice president of the ISC, Canadian. Foul ball Good. by Annie. Count goes to two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Hey, my God, yeah, my God, here go, buddy. It's a ground ball to short. Steve Hazard's up with it. Nice throw. Moving towards third base, but an accurate throw back to first, and the inning is over. And doesn't he make it look easy? Such an athletic play. He's gone deep in the 5 6 hole, picked up the ball, and ever so casually made the out. It's a great play from Steve Hazard. Gee, Liz, he's great to watch. Textbook, mate. Yeah, he is. You can tell he's really been coached well. He grew up playing uh, GB baseball, came up through the junior national team system, has also played for GB fast pitch in the men's team and has been in the GB slow pitch team for, for many years and is certainly one of their most outstanding players. And definitely his experience showed there in that play, Liz, getting them out of that innings. And for sure he's going to wind up in the BSF Hall of Fame. Um, but Calling it nice and early, Bob. B BSF Hall of Famer right there. And he's still so young. Jeez. But, of course, Jeez. the key thing is H2O didn't score, so this remains a two-run ball game. Pioneers, you could kind of feel the momentum may have shifted. Yeah, really interesting point in the game here. The game is still well and truly up for grabs uh, here in the sixth. And you know, it's just great to see a nice close game, Liz. Yeah, and you, you won't find much closer than this. And Dan Spinks will be leading off for Pioneers. Capable of hitting the ball out, capable of getting on base. Let's see what he uh, what his approach is this and that. Ball hits the back of the plate. Otherwise, it uh, looked like a nice pitch, but it's ball one. Dan, the batter, just called time there, left the field uh, to go and get his sunglasses. Obviously, the sun is becoming uh, a little bit problematic for some of these batters here. Dan swings, tries to drive the ball out of the ballpark, but hits it foul, way foul to the left side. Which, let's face it, Liz, it's just great to have some sunshine here in British softball. Uh, let's enjoy it while it lasts. And I guess he's, as to the picture, he's one of the only guys not looking into the sun. One on one. First one was a ball. Count is one and one. Strike. Strike two. Nice pitch from Roger Grooms. One ball, two strikes. Dan has to swing at that pitch, and he hits it in the left field for a base hit. Picked up on one hop, thrown back in. Dan has no chance to get to second base. Time. To start the pioneers we're looking for. And just something else to mention while we're here as well is, um, you know, looking around of all the players that are playing here, they're actually from all over the country. We've got players from Scotland. We've got players from around Birmingham, Bristol. Um, certainly, we've got a lot of representation from Manchester here this weekend, um, and it's really great to see development. It's a great league here in London, and we obviously have a huge amount of players, but to see all that development outside of the greater London area is really fantastic to see. Yeah, it really is, and there's a huge amount of talent. Uh, the Midlands is very strongly represented here in this game. It's really good to see British softball strong. The and that's a base hit in the right field by Laura Brockman. Dan Spinks is digging for third. He's going to make it. And runners on the corners and no one out. It's a massive hit there from Amy. Under pressure. That was was that Amy? No, Laura Brockman. No, Laura Brockman. My apologies. I do apologize there, Laura. That was an outstanding hit. We'll have to do it. So the tying runs are on base for Pioneers. <laughs> And it looks like we may be making a change. Just straight Robbie for you. Cool. Thank you. And change is going to bring Robbie Robeson to the plate. Here we go, Robbie. Let's see if we Batting got this is Robbie. Rice. Robbie Robeson. So, father and daughter in the same team, Liz. It's great to see you, really, as a family sport, softball. Robbie certainly hits the ball for power. I imagine this will just be for a pinch hit. He doesn't typically play out for I imagine that Steve Rice will come back in after Robbie um, has his at bat, but let's see what Robbie can do. And you've got to expect a solid line drive uh, base hit here from Robbie. That's usually what we're what we're seeing. 
He's very consistent batting and Strike. certainly been, um, again, been in the British uh, slow pitch team for, for a good few years and been a big contributor with his coaching as well. And it's a base hit, past second base, into right center field. Dan Speaks comes home. Laura Brockman stops the second. Robbie did exactly what he's putting there to do, deliver a base hit. Yep. Yep. As predicted, right up the middle, Liz. Fantastic shot, Robbie. I imagine he will now be coming out of the game and Ricey will run for him. But uh, he's done his job. And that is exactly what's happened. Steve Rice has uh, gone into a run for Robbie. Just re hey, like last time, Chelsea. Something you can drive, kid. Something you can hit hard. And we've got another game, change Chelsea. here, which is Steve Rice re-entering the game to run for Robbie. And of course, Robbie's daughter Chelsea now comes to the plate. So can we have two back-to-back -back base hits by the Robeson family? She had a, I think she had a great hit in the last innings, if I remember correctly. She's a very patient batter. She'll be looking for a good pitch, a good pitch that she can get hold of and, and looking for a single here. Can she add a Nationals title to uh, her Europeans? Be a great couple of weeks for her. Oh, she, she, it would be, Liz. she takes the first pitch for a ball. Swings and hits the ground ball to short. Ethan Solomon's up with it, throws to first. Chelsea's out. Time! But Laura Brockman moves to third base. So the tying run is now on third. And there's one out. Two outs. You've got to think that uh, he's in a good position to score Laura here for three. Yeah, I guess he just needs to stay away from the fly ball now that we have two down. Gotta be quick. Strike! And takes a strike. Oh, a slip at shortstop by Ethan Solomon. He's reaching for a little line drive by Dan Bello. The tying run comes in to score. It's oh. 8 to 8. Gets it through, and I, do you know what, Liz? I think that's the only thing I've seen go through past Ethan today. He's had a great day, unfortunately, that one he just couldn't quite keep hold of. And we have a tight ball game, Liz. I like it. It's fantastic to see such a tight game uh, right in the national final. Gotta get out of the wire. So here's Kim Akehurst, runner on first, two down, 8-8 eight, eight game, bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah. Kim swings, it's a line drive, it's a base hit to center field. The runner stops at the second base, one and two, and Kim has cleared the bottom of the order and brought up the top of the order. That is a cracking hit from Kim. Now Pioneers could really sense that the game might be turning their way. Yeah, it's a good shot here. Fleeter could really, really open it up. It's been impressive in every game I've seen him uh, this weekend, Liz. Strike! And Roger Gloom shows him a strike. We've got Liz, two, uh, two outs, runners on one or two. And that's a line drive. Base hit in the left center field. The Pioneers are taking the lead. Come back from a big deficit, oh, taking man. the lead. Steve Rice comes in to score. Kim Akers moves to second. Runners on first and second, but now Pioneers are in the lead. Fleeter with a clutch hit there, Liz. Yeah, great batting, great team batting. It brings to the plate Amy Rice. Amy Rice, interestingly, hits right-handed, but fields fields left, quite unusual. But she'll be looking uh, she'll be looking for a nice base hit here. Right. You might have noticed the common surname there, Liz. Uh, Amy is married to uh, Steve Rice. They are indeed, and have a, a young family. Ball. Count is one and one, and of course H2O now have only one at bat to come back with this right. deficit. Amy swings, it's a little fly ball in the left field. No one is going to get that, it drops. The base runners have to hold, they move up one base. Bases are loaded. No one can get to that. It was hit in the right place, if not very hard. Yeah, sometimes those kind of, I guess, miss hits are very hard to defend. You can't set your field for that. Um, and, and that was a great example of just the ball dropping in and you, you can't defend that. So here we have bases loaded. But now loaded. look where we are. Bases yeah. loaded, Base. Steve Hazard coming up. Yeah. He could break this game Steve wide Hazard. open. I mean, this is exactly what Pioneers would be hoping for right now. I mean, even if he's got a base hit, he's scoring likely two runs here. But the, the outfield is deep. There's plenty of opportunities for a base hit here. And Steve takes a strike from Roger Grooms. And Hazard has just asked for time here, as well as walking up, I assume, to get some sunglasses. Yeah, uh, the really sun must be right That sun's right getting a little bit lower in the sky and is going to become problematic for the rest of this game. 
Jenny Ball waits on deck. Steve has it uh, coming back out of the dugout. It's not a surprise there, Liz, to see the ladies with the sunglasses on already. We're pretty efficient, aren't we? Yeah, she's learned from others. No balls, one strike. She's, uh, she's learned from Bit others. of multitasking, us girls. She swings and hits it high and deep, but foul. Dead. Might have been a touch early on that one, Steve, there. Um, no balls, two strikes. Two strikes on the batter. Roger illegal. Lee throws the ball high and illegal. Steve Hazard is not going to pitch for that. Count is one and two. Good pitching for Roger Grooms, just to stay around the edges here. Another high pitch, bounce back to Roger Grooms. Steve Hazard doesn't bother to run, throws the bat away in disgust. Roger tosses to first base. Steve you have will to be run everything out in softball, you never know. But uh, not what Steve Hazard wanted. Yeah, an opportunity going begging there, but you know what, they've got the lead. Uh, they've done their job, but let's see what H2O can do with them. Um, uh, one at bat left. So we go to the top of the seventh okay. inning. H2O's maybe last at bat in this game. They have to score at least one. Scores Pioneers nine, H2O eight. Top of, seven. top of the seventh coming up. Pioneers are uh, three outs away, Liz, from being national champions. What do you reckon? What do you say? Oh, big opportunity here. I guess uh, Hazard or all of Pioneers need to shake that off and uh, make sure they play tight defense here. Of course, Hazard there would have been dirty on himself, uh, grounding out to the pitcher, but as soon as he stepped away from, instead of running it out, as soon as he stepped away and started walking back towards the dugout, he, the ball was dead and he was out anyway, so he gave himself no chance. Um, the, the, op the thing is now, shake that off and just play tight defense, get these three outs. But of course, uh, H2O are going to start off with the, the batter they want to see, which is Ethan Solomon, who could tie the game up with one swing. Definitely. And that's the thing, it is only one run. This game is a long way from over. Dan Spinks okay. knows that the sun is looking right in the batter's eyes. Just a, step throw the ball high. just a step away from our softball for one minute. Just um, breaking news. Max Whitlock has just made British history by taking a gold medal in the Pommel Horse Olympics. Well done, boy. Right. Go GB. Go GB. And Australia. Here we go, top of the seventh inning. I lost uh, the ball. Chris Moon couldn't see the pitch. The sun was in I his eyes. I lost the ball when I looked down. Right. One and one. One and one. One and one. Sorry, Dan. I, I, I lost the ball in the sun. I, Just some I lost discussion it here about uh, Chris Sorry, Moon lost one one. track of the. We'll call it discussion. A little bit of tension uh, here. One. Chris Moon unfortunately lost track of the ball in the sun as it came through, uh, came through the across the plate. You can't call what you can't see. I couldn't see, see where so it landed. When back. I looked down, I was still blind. Of course, pitchers don't always agree with that logic. However, that seems reasonable to me. What? No, 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 no. no. Now Dan Spinks is going over for a chat. Uh, we've got a delay here. Steve Patterson's come I out for I see the sun. H2O. It's above the ball. It's all in my vision. Then I lose it. So let's go. I'm not really sure there's a lot they can do, though. If we didn't see it, didn't see it, that, that, that's what it is. Hey, come on, let's go. Here we go. Yeah, definitely very tense here, Liz. Uh, one run ball game. H2O with uh, potentially just uh, one at bat left. Nobody's willing to give anything away. Yeah, and I guess a little bit of gamesmanship as well, whatever advantage you one can one. Uh, gain. Done. Play ball. Play. Now there's going to be more discussion between Dan Spinks and Chris Moon. And just while that discussion is going, a little bit of correction from me there. Um, said the pommel horse. It should have been the floor. Max Whitlock. Max. Max Whitlock. Gold on the floor, Liz, in well, the gymnastics. Congratulations to the young fella. There you go. Good job. Let's see. Where are we at now? Back to the game. They're Back just the finishing game. their discussion. I'm not sure there's a huge amount to discuss. Yeah. However, um, anyway, back, back we are. Dan Spinks on the pitcher's plate, and we will restart the game. So it looks like we have a one-on-one -on -one count. Ethan lays off strike. that one, and it's a strike. Chris Moon shading his eyes as he watched the pitch come in. Dan Spinks keeping it high, and a leaping catch by Jenny Ball at third base. Line drive, and Jenny Ball went to her left, snared it out of the air, and it's one down, and H2O 
their chances are beginning to diminish. Holy balls, Liz, that was amazing. That was a really nice play, and I think Dan Spinks here, that was pretty much a classic catch there. Great job, Jenny Ball, to hang on to that. Dan Spinks, who's really showing his experience with his pitching, is certainly in slow pitch softball. He can't throw the ball any higher than 12 foot, and uh, I think he's making the most of this sunny situation to really to, to push that push 12 foot Push the boundaries there, Liz. Batter is Kim Miller. Not sure how much she can see the ball, but she hits a line drive in the left center. And that's a base hit. So Kim, representing the tying run, is on base. That's a great hit there. Great hit. H2O with a runner on now. It looks like we may have a pitch hitter here. So H2O are sending Stuart Butcher up to the plate. Batting for Lee Cornwall. Stewart has more power, certainly. Lee tends to be a singles hitter, a line drive hitter. Stewart has power. I think H2O are looking for an extra base hit here that could bring that tying run into score. You know, and that's what they're going to be hoping for, that extra base hit. Let's just move that run around, tie up the game. Let's see what happens. Uh, Steve Patterson over here talking to Chris Moon, just making sure that all the substitutions are accounted for correctly. Dan Spinks, of course, will keep the ball up in the sun as much as he can. Yeah, he'll be making the most of the situation. He'll be using ex experience to uh, to make the most of the 12 foot up that he can. Stuart Butcher has his sunglasses on and his cap pulled over his eyes. Here we go. Strike. Stewart takes the first one. Chris Moon peers into the sun and calls it a strike. Stewart swings. It's a high fly ball to right field. And it's dropped in right field. Kim Miller looking to go to third. Stumbles a bit. Gets back to second. Time. And a crucial misplay in right field gives H2O some hope. Yeah, we, we still have ourselves a ball game here. Oh, unfortunately, just popped out of a glove there. It's unlucky there uh, out in right field. Uh, but uh, H2O with two runners on. Yep, time. Again, it looks like we might have some discussion here, maybe a substitution. As said, Liz, pretty tense over here. The uh, scheduled batter is Paz Paniota. She had a nice base hit the last time up. But it looks like she's coming out, and Michelle Collier is going to be put into pitch hit for her. Michelle pitched okay. hit in the last game and had a line drive base hit. Again, she probably has a bit more power. And uh, so now we've got Michelle Collier up to bat. Uh, Michelle's from Manchester. She uh, plays for the Lions. She is the sister of Ed Watkinson, who is also a GB squad member. Um, she has a great bat. She has a great bat. Um, she's hit a lot of home runs in Manchester. I think she's currently leading the home run table in Manchester for girls. Um, let's see what she can bring to the table here and see if she can get H2O back in this game. A lot, lot of pressure on her in this situation. There's one out. So big so. situation here coming into um, pinch hit with one out and runners on first and second. So big opportunity here. And if Michelle can't deliver, or even if she can, it'd be Roger Grooms coming up behind her. Strike. Michelle looks at the first pitch and takes a strike. Holds the bat straight out from her body before she gets into the hitting position. Strike. Looks at another strike, and it looks like she might be having trouble seeing the ball. Yeah, and again, they're, they're quite high pitches. Dan's making the most of that 12 foot. It's another one Michelle swings. It's a pop fly. It's going to go foul. Foul. Pioneers let it go, and that's the second out. 
Unlucky there for Michelle. I mean, it's a pressure at bat for her as well with two runners on in the bottom of this game. So I don't, I don't uh, think she ever saw the Michelle. ball very well. Dan Smith's kept it way up in the air. Yeah, and great pitching, I guess, making the most of the situation that we're currently in. So here's Roger Grooms and H2O down to their final out. Roger looking around. Where does he want to put the ball? Oh, yeah. It's called a ball high, and Roger turned away as if he couldn't see it either. Roger's a very disciplined batter. He won't be chasing much that's out of the zone. He'll be waiting for a good pitch to get after. H2O down to their last out here. It's a lower pitch. Roger hits it back through the middle. It's going into center field. They're sending Kim Miller. Here comes the throw, and Kim Miller slides, and she's safe. The game is tied. Stewart Butcher goes to third. Roger to second. Oh. So tied the game. They have runners on second and third. Well, fantastic, timely hitting there. Geez, you can't expect much more than that, Liz. That was outstanding. Great job there, Roger Grooms. There's and, one here uh, somewhere. Almost a big play at home there. He took the ball right back up the middle, which is where yep. you want to take it. You have to get it down past Dan Sphinx yep. first, of course. Which Tied is the game, easy. and it's certainly going to at least force Pioneers to have to bat again. And now the batter is Amy Wells. In a position not, not to win the game, but to put her team back in the lead. Because Pioneers have, have the last at bat. Yeah, the advantage of being the home team, you get to have the last at bat. So that's, that's the advantage that Pioneers have in this game. Here. Amy takes being the, the strike. Team. The H2O bench, bench didn't like it, but Chris Moon called it. Oh, yeah. And strike. another strike, too. Yeah, the sun looks now like Amy's really getting some sunglasses. I mean, imagine I would expect that as uh, when Pioneers have to go back out to bat here, I would expect Roger to be pushing those boundaries of that high pitch. No ball, like now. Yeah, yeah, making absolutely. the most of the situation. He too is a very experienced pitcher. Oh, and two pitch Amy Wells, very high. Amy swings to chopper to third base. Jenny Ball comes in. And tight ball, and gets tight ball the game. Out. This is great stuff, Bob. Are you loving it? I'm loving it. I mean, uh, what a close play at first base. You probably saw it a little bit better than I did. Would, did you get the out? Yeah, I think that's a good call there from the blue. What do you yeah. reckon, casual? Yeah, I think the umpires have done a really good job uh, this game and all season. I don't know. I've said it before, Liz. Uh, the umpires are always right. <laughs> they are always right. Uh, Except when they're wrong. So, one run for H2O at the top of the seventh inning. Ties the game at nine. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Pioneers can win it, and they will be starting with... The number four hitter, Jenny Ball. Hey, Jenny, just like you do, kid. Each show re entering fielders. And Roger Grooms. As Kelly said, is going to try and keep the ball up there in the sun, and, just like Dan Spinks did. And, you did. know, it's a smart thing to do, right? They're both very experienced. They're both GB pitchers. Um, you know what? Fair play to them. It, you know, if, if you've got the ability to do it, do it. Yeah, take advantage of Absolutely what you right. Do. Absolutely right. Of course, that sun is getting minutely lower all the time. Although, I've got to say, Bob, um, three hour drive back to Manchester, I could do with this game being over in seven innings um, rather than getting to a tie break, but it's great for the fans, Liz. Cool, we've got to pack up the fields. Oh, unlucky, mate. I reckon you can get that done in under three hours. Love the support from my mate. Love the support. So here we are, guys, at the bottom of the seventh, the tied game. Of course, if we are still tied after the completion of this inning, we'll play an extra um, inning. We call that international tiebreak, and a runner will start on second base for both teams. So here's so Jenny Ball with her, with her sunglasses on. Strike. And, and she you know takes what? They are one. in a good place in their order here, Pioneers, to, uh, to, to make something happen. Jenny swings in. It's a base hit. In the left field, between third and short. Took a nice, easy swing, poked the ball through the hole, and Pioneers Five. had the winning run on first base. That is exactly what uh, Pioneers would have been hoping for, and a uh, big hit here for Dan Spinks. Clutch hit. He could finish this game now with one swing list. He could. However, I'd prefer he played the odds and went for a line drive and just moved that run around base at a time. Uh, but you can't ask for much more from Jenny Ball, the leadoff. Yeah, that's I mean, absolutely terrible. That's going to be the team hit for him, um, but the fans would love one over the fence here to finish it, Liz. Pitch from Roger Grooms, Dan Spinks lays off, hits the plate, ball one. Can't imagine though, Roger's going to give him anything that he can do that with. Uh, a bit of a pitcher's battle going on here. Big fan of the pitcher's battle, Liz. Dan Spinks lays off again, it's outside for ball two. 
ball. Dead ball three, and a walk pushes a winning run to third base with no one out. And brings up Laura Brockman, who is a fantastic hitter, followed three by... Ball. a great hit in the last innings, Laura did. Strike! And Roger throws a strike, Dan takes it, it's three and one. High drive to left field, is it deep enough? Harry, Harry, Harry. No, it's not, it's caught in foul territory. Jenny tags up, goes to second base. In scoring position, but Dan Spinks didn't quite get all of it. Not quite the result he was looking for, but still a good um, effect. He moved the runner up to second, traded an out yeah, for a base. Takes the force off as well, which yeah. is uh, good for Pioneers. Uh, but Jesus, he went for it there. He certainly did. She's got awfully close. Not quite, not quite long enough. So here's Laura Brockman. Winning run on second base. Championship run on second base. Roger Goons looks around at the field. Play! They've got to be able to throw. They're running out of the plate on a base hit. Strike! Roger throws a strike. Laura not wearing sunglasses. Swings, it's a ground ball. Ethan has it at short, throws to first. The runner has to hold at second base. And that was exactly what H2O wanted. It's a great play there from Ethan, and especially after he had that one go past him in the last innings, Liz. Uh, Jeez, he did a great job. Yeah, he's put it behind him, and he's made another a great play there to potentially save the game. So here's Steve Rice, left-handed batter, line drive hitter. Rogers arranging the field. You'll notice the field has shifted significantly. Shortstop playing well up the middle, and the outfielders as well so, uh, shifted around Bonjour. to adjust for the left-handed hitter. Uh, Steve is um, a great base hitter here, and uh, he's got all the potential to uh, have a great base hit here and move them around. Well, them, uh, Jenny. Steve Patterson have a few words with him, trying to just Play. take his mind off this at bat. Steve Sounds Rice like something Steve Patterson would do. Here's the pitch. Ball. Take it for ball one. Steve Rice wins the base hit up the middle. Jenny Ball's coming around oh, third base. The ball game. That's He's going to score. Pioneers. Pioneers, the national champions. Pioneers, the national champions. Jenny gets a hug at home plate. There's a whole team hug at home plate. Steve Rice delivered. What a fantastic right. effort. I think, what, 8-1 no. down and come back to win it? Side. That is an absolutely outstanding effort from uh, Pioneers. Really, really pleased with them. And a huge blow to H2O, who once again get so close for national championship and don't you know, manage to and win it. So close for national football, but you know what? H2O well, have had a fantastic season. They've come away as uh, European champions. Um, you know, they should hold their heads very high. They've had a fantastic season both here at Diamond at Europeans. Uh, it's unlucky for them. They've missed out again. Yeah, absolutely. They'll be back next year. I'm sure they'll be back bigger and better and stronger. And uh, yeah, you can't help but feel a little bad for them. But as Kelly said, they really have had a fantastic season. But for now, Pioneers, congratulations on a fantastic win. And, and what a great final we had. Uh, well, Liz, um, long drive back to Manchester and you've got to pack up the fields. Um, I hope everybody out there, um, there's still a little bit to go on yet. We've got presentations and a few other things. But um, good call, Liz, Bob. Enjoyed it. We're going to uh, look at highlights from this. Uh, so we, uh, the teams are shaking hands. Uh, H2O are going to be, have a lot of regrets, but they played a great ball game. Pioneers just came back and overtook them. We're going to look at um, some of the highlights from the game. We're going to have interviews with the, uh, with the team captain, so don't go away. Um, once again, just to uh, repeat the results of the other divisions, um, in the Platinum Nationals, the National Softball League 2, Nottingham Sheriffs are the champions. In the Gold Division, uh, Dodgers are the champions. They beat Mouse Rat in the final. In the Silver Section, Angels are the champions. They beat United Nations in their final. And in the Bronze category, Vikings are the champions. They beat the Rattlesnakes in the final. So another very successful national co-ed slow pitch championship for the British Softball Federation. Beautiful weather all weekend. Some great softball, especially this final. And the teams are rightly being applauded off the field. Yeah, great. it's a really friendly crowd here, showing great support for, for the winners and for the runners-up. And uh, it's great for them to have stuck around for so long to, to show their support for this. And 
Do you know what a fantastic showcase for Great Britain, uh, Great Britain slow pitch softball? Um, it just continues to get better and better and improve. And in part of my role now as uh, team manager for GB, it's a pleasure to see not only the established players that we have, but also uh, some of the players that are up and coming, some of the younger ones. We've got GB Futures who are going to get a go uh, over at uh, World Series. And then obviously we're taking a team to the World Cup. Um, Hopefully we've got a lot of listeners out there and we've got a lot of followers. Um, it would be great. We could always do with, uh, this is a bit of a plug everybody by the way, but we could always do with some funding for GB, any sort of GB software, whether it's slow pitch or otherwise. Um, so please, if you know anybody or there's anybody out there who is keen to really start to get the ball rolling for this sport, it's a fantastic sport. Um, please get in touch with uh, BSUK, Liz. Yep. Yeah, either get in touch with the British Softball Federation or us at the Baseball Softball UK office and we can certainly put you in touch with the right people. I mean, British softball national teams, there are seven different national teams. They're, they're all self-funded, at least at the moment. Um, as uh, Kelly said, we could really do with some help because it's the players and, and often the parents with the younger teams that come up with the money for them to travel all over the world and represent Great Britain. And uh, it would be great if they could have some help to do yeah. that. And let's certainly hope that Stu's kid, that kid that just ran in his home run around the diamond, is a big part of British softball's future. Big future here, Liz, for all the uh, the young ones that are up and coming. Um, for me personally, um, loved doing the commentary for this event. Oh, we've got the highlights. Look at this. Yep, we're starting at the beginning. We're going to show you some of the highlights from this game, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to the uh, team captains. So the game started out uh, really... Uh, one-sided in favor of H2O. They jumped out to a... They, well, they did jump up to a huge lead, but they gradually built up a lead. They scored one in the first. They uh, scored four in the uh, third inning. They scored two more in the fourth inning. So they were up 7 nothing. That's where the comeback began. Uh, Pioneers scored a run to cut it to 7-1. Uh, Ethan Solomon immediately hit one out. That made it 8-1. But from that point on, it was really all Pioneers. Yeah, and I've got to say, I mean, really, the tide turned when they made that pitching change where Steve Rice came in and got that big strikeout when Brian was up to bat. And do you know what? Ever since they made that change, uh, Pioneers were on top right from there on in. Yeah, it was certainly a turning point and a great example of good game management, I think, there. And uh, it just changed the momentum a little bit of the game. Yeah. And actually, just looking back at these highlights now, I mean, we can just see on the screen, fantastic footage, fantastic footage. Yeah, I think it's also credit to both teams that it was certainly wasn't a one-person show. Most, uh, both teams had a lot of players contributing. It wasn't there was uh, any uh, particular stars of the game. We had some, obviously, some really good performers, but no one single player won it or lost it for either of the teams. No, there will, of course, be MVPs given for this game, as, as there always are, but uh, absolutely, this, this was a team effort for both teams. And you had clutch base hits really up and down the, the lineup for both teams. Yeah, we had some really timely hitting. I thought we also had some really sharp defense as well. And I think in some ways that base hit by Roger Grooms to tie the game, even though in the end his team didn't win, but that was an incredible hit in, in really difficult conditions. Absolutely. The sun in his eyes. Yeah. yeah, and he pitched a great game as well, didn't he? He did a great job making the most of the conditions. So while you're watching the highlights, the uh, BSF president, Stella Ackrell, and uh, is getting the trophies out They're on the field. They're going to be presenting trophies to the winners in all of the divisions. So there will be five sets of trophy presentations. That, that could take a while. Uh, your trip back to Manchester may be uh, a little delayed. <laughs> well, look, I hope everybody in, uh, enjoyed the call. I had a great time uh, here with uh, Liz and, and Bob. And uh, do you know what? Let's make sure we've got more viewers tuning in for all the other streaming events that we do. For and hopefully next year we're going to be doing a, a lot more of them. We, we've found the uh, really company has done a really great job. Uh, uh, we're looking to do more events with them next year. As Liz said before, fast pitch and, and slow pitch and baseball as well. Yeah, I think it's a really big step forward for our, our sports in this country as well. Just trying to help build the profile, but also enabling people all around the country to follow the games that are played here as well. brought up the dust in these dry conditions. A little bit dusty down here, Liz. And that is the, uh, the winning run. She will not want to watch that highlight too often. No, yeah. and there's the uh, pioneers having their yeah, hug. unlucky there for it, but you know what? It's not down to that one play, Liz. We all know that. So no. the 
it's never down to the one play. It's just unfortunate, uh, unfortunate to finish yeah. a game on, on that kind of note. Yeah. We're just waiting, folks, as we're setting up for the presentations. The presentations will be starting uh, any moment now. It's not what you want. Oh, this level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Kelly, will there be a uh, will there be a squad selection yeah, for the no, team to go to to Florida at some point? Oh, uh, yeah, there will be a squad selection. Yeah. So um, now that we've actually obviously there's been a lot going on for ISF at the minute with the Worlds and a few other things. So we're still waiting on a few details to be confirmed. Um, once we have that, we've reached out to all of the players. Um, you know, we're looking for availability and we're looking to send the best team that we can um, for, for these types of international events. Um, so again, funding's really, really important for us. I know I've mentioned it and it's not something to labour on, but funding's super important. You know, we don't get a huge amount of sponsorship money and a lot of these trips are funded by the players themselves. And, you know, we've obviously had raffles and different fundraising events to try and help out, but um, it's a big deal for a lot of these players and it's a chance to, to represent their country internationally. Um, so, yeah, we will be looking to send the best team that we can. And, of course, the hope is that uh, this event could move from being a Slopish World Cup to a genuine Slopish World Championship in, in the near future. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and, you know, from, from what we're hearing, and again, once we get the confirmation through about about who's playing, um, even if it doesn't turn out to be that big World Championship, that you know, we, whether it's this year or in the future, um, it still is a massive opportunity for everybody involved. And Bob, can you just clarify for the people at home the difference between a World Cup and a World Championship, please? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, In a, a nutshell. World, a World Championship means that you have national teams participating, and all the players would have to be nationals of, of that country. Um, a World Cup is essentially you could be either a club or a national team. Uh, the eligibility rules are not quite so strict. Mm -hmm. So the teams that we've seen come to the Slopich World Cup in the past... Um, there have been club teams, there have been national teams from, I mean, we send a national team, uh, Bulgaria sends a national team, some of the uh, Caribbean islands send national teams, uh, other countries send club teams, there have been American club teams, a Canadian club team last year that was, was very strong and had some, uh, some really top players on it. So a, a cup can be a bit of a mixture, a championship has to be national teams and national team passport holders and, and players. And the reason we like this event uh, that we're talking about to move to a, uh, a world championship is because it means that slow pitch begins to be taken more seriously on an international level. I mean, mainly the international competition format is fast pitch, mainly for women, also for men. They have world championships. Uh, there's never really been a slow pitch world championship. It would be great if there could be one. I mean, slow pitch has more participants around the world than fast pitch does because it's more accessible, it's more recreational. But as we've seen here today, there are teams that play slow pitch at a really high level. It would be great to have a competition that showcased that. And you know, it's only good for the game, right? You know, the quality of softball in this country, whether it's fast pitch or slow pitch, is continuing to pr improve all the time. And we've seen that from some of the recent results that we've had. So, uh, you know what, it's, uh, we're doing a lot of the right things, which is good. Yeah, it's really exciting. In my six years of involvement here in British softball, I've certainly seen huge improvements, but uh, the recent results we've had really kind of um, validate that. So it's really exciting to see. So I think the teams are being called on the field for the, the presentations, which hopefully will happen shortly. The other thing that might be worth mentioning while the, uh, the teams come onto the field that are going to receive trophies, and we're getting teams from all of the, the different categories of play this weekend, is that um, the British Softball Federation and BSUK are, are very keen to grow fast pitch in this country. The overwhelming number of, of players and teams in this country are slow pitch teams. Um, we've recently, BSUK has recently hired a fast pitch development officer to help that process along, and this autumn we're going to have a series of clinic and competition weekends at Farnham Park uh, in late September and October. Anybody can come along, whether you played fast pitch before or not, uh, from the age of about 14 on up to, to whatever. Uh, 
our, our fast speech development officer, Joe Malasani, will be, will be running those weekends. There'll be clinics uh, in the mornings, competition in the afternoon. Anybody who wants to get involved can email Joe at uh, Johanna Malasani johanna.malasani at bsuk.com or you could also email Liz Knight which is a little easier to spell liz.knight at bsuk.com and uh, we'll make sure that you uh, get a chance to take part in those weekends Sure um, and folks just on that as well the coaching clinics also they will be in um, autumn this year we are launching our new coach um <coughs> coach education program and as part of that there'll be player clinics available to slow pitch players um, on demand on certain topics so whether it's pitching, hitting, base running there'll be certain um, uh, clinics available for players focused on slow pitch so please do keep an eye out for that that will be coming out in awesome this year. And of course in January next year BSUK will be running its, its second annual coach summit there'll be uh, clinic sessions for slow pitch, fast pitch and baseball with really top clinicians from uh, this country and, and internationally. Uh, it was a big success last year when we ran it for the first time and hopefully it will be bigger and better this year or next next year. Alright Liz Bob, uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, presentations are about to start. Uh, good call and I will see you guys in the World Series. Appreciate it Kel, look forward to it. Thank you very much Kelly. So the presentations are just starting here with Stella Ackrell, who is the British Softball Federation President, and she's about to make some awards. So Stella is um, giving some thank yous now for uh, the running of these nationals, and particularly to Liz Graham, who's the BSF uh, tournaments officer, who did all the organization, uh, even though she wasn't able to attend in person. So we've got a, a lovely late right, afternoon scene Max. here with the okay, teams so the lined up, the sun course, behind the SF President Stella our umpires. So a huge round of applause for our umpires, please. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have already left, but um, thank you to our, uh, our crew chief, um, Pete. Um, I'd like Pete to come up because Pete has a presentation, a small announcement to make on the umpiring. As some of you may know, in Austria last weekend, uh, one of our umpires retired from European softball. And we've got a little gift for him here from the teams. I'd like to present this to Chris Moon. <laughs> Many years of service, thank you. <laughs> Sad loss. You might need to tell us I have to get the words out. Oh. Yeah, so you're Okay, as usual, we're going to start in um, reverse order. We're going to start with the bronze final. Bronze winners up were the rattlesnakes. And the bronze winners were the Vikings. And the MVPs were Billy from the Rattlestakes and Charlotte Green from the Vikings.
Billy from the Rattlesnakes. Otto Silva, the runners up were United Nations. And the winners were the Angels. MVPs, Tracy Sharp from the United Nations and John Christian from the Angels. In the gold, the runners up were mouse rats. And the gold winners were the Dodgers. Yeah. MVPs were Nikki Puckett and Joseph Hibbenstiel. In the platinum, the runners up were the Ninos. And the winners were the Sheriffs. And the Platinum MVPs were Dave Kwan and Francesca for the Sheriffs. <laughs> and finally ASL, the runners up, H2O. And then it's our winners, Pioneers! And finally, the NSL MVPs, Jenny Ball and Steve Hazard. Thank you. Safe trip home.
Well, those are the uh, prizes given out, the MVP awards, the prizes to all of the teams that won in the different uh, categories here at the 2016 BSF Cohen Slowfish National Championships. We're still hoping to have a couple of words with uh, players from uh, H2O and Pioneers. The uh, Pioneers, by, by winning, of course, get the right to go to the next European Slow Pitch Cup to represent Great Britain. Uh, the team that wins the, that'll be uh, in two years' time, in 2018, the team that wins the Nationals next year will also get to go. If Pioneers win again in both years, the BSF will probably select the uh, NSL winner from 2018. But they're uh, beginning to uh, dismantle the, uh, the tables and the trophies. The uh, players are beginning to drift away. Um, as I said, hopefully we'll be able to get you uh, a couple of words with uh, players from both teams that played such a fantastic final in the uh, Premier National Championships. There's still a lot of softball to be played this season. Of course, the, the World Series tournament that uh, we talked about during the broadcast is on the 10th and 11th of September at the uh, Heston venue in, in uh, Cranford. Uh, if you can get along to that, you really should because there's some tremendous softball played there with players from all over Europe as well as all over the UK. Um, you'll see a lot of the teams that played in this tournament in that uh, competition, but of course playing for uh, national teams rather than club teams, which makes it a unique event. In uh, September, the uh, GB baseball team, senior baseball team, will be going to European Championships in Holland. Um, looking to uh, improve their their European ranking and uh, make a mark with qualification for the Tokyo Olympics, of course, coming up in, in three years' time. GB would certainly like to have a shot at qualifying. And, of course, the uh, GB women's fast pitch team will be very much looking forward to trying to qualify for an Olympic place. And the recent results in fast pitch, both by the women's team and the uh, junior women's national team, suggest that uh, Great Britain has a really... Uh, realistic chance of doing that and how great would it be to see uh, a great great britain teams uh, in uh, in europe And uh, so I'm talking to Dan Spinks, who's the, the pitcher and uh, one of the main organizers of the Pioneers. And you've you've won the Nationals again. Uh, I think the last time was about four years ago, and there's been one team that kind of intervened over the last four years. You fell behind early in the game. When did you did you do you always feel you had a chance to come back? Yeah, with the team. I mean, we've, this season we've um, we've went to a few finals and not quite come through, but we've got the belief and the ability within the team. And there was there was no question. We had a different mindset to start the game off. Um, we've worked hard all throughout the weekend with only five girls. One of them that's injured. One of them that's come back from pregnancy. So a big shout out to those guys. Um, and the guys just chipped away and helped out. So it was it was a long time coming for four years, but we I feel we we were good for it and we deserved it. You know, we battled through the game up well. I, th I thought it was a great game. I mean, do you think there was a turning point in the game? Turning point in the game, from 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 a pioneer's perspective, it was probably when I, when I came out of pitching. Steve Rice came into pitch, and then there was a key strikeout, and I feel that just sort of changed the momentum of the game, and it gave us a bit more confidence going into bat in the next innings. Um, I feel that was a, a turning point for sure. Yeah, we, we felt that as well. And um, in those last inning, last couple of innings, when the sun was was in the batter's eyes, uh, I kind of felt that both you and Roger Grooms were trying to take advantage of that. Yeah, well, Roger's a, a really good pitcher as well. Having spent lots of tours away with him on the GB program, we're, we're both uh, fairly experienced with using the conditions to our advantage, and both of us saw the opportunity to, to drop it out of the sun. And even, even the umpire at points was was finding it difficult to call the balls and strikes which is what the hold up was it towards the end so um, yeah both really good pitches and it definitely had a factor within within the game towards the end yeah, absolutely Dan con many congratulations and uh, thanks very thanks, much Bob. thanks very much appreciate that
And thanks, thanks for joining us this weekend uh, for the broadcast. What a celebration, what a fantastic celebration of British softball and what a way to wrap up our season. Thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to uh, you joining us.